My name is Liz Wallace. I have been making jewelry since 1996, uh, silver jewelry anyway. But uh, I grew up doing beadwork and, and things like that. I was always really good with my hands. Let's see, I, first I started doing really contemporary things, very modern, clean lines, but it just didn't sell very much. And I was having to make a living repairing old jewelry, which really did not enjoy. I wasn't able to make a living doing jewelry until I started doing the turquoise. For probably seven or eight years, I just was cranking out all this classic style, uh, butterflies, earrings, bracelets. Um, and, you know, I was really, really grateful that I had that and that uh, people bought it and it was so popular. But I really, I felt like I was just regurgitating what had already been done. I really had loved Plique Jour. I saw pictures of it in a book when I was about 17 or 18 and just fell in love with it. It looked so amazing. The Art Nouveau jewelry just is the best that was ever made. Someone I knew named Bob Bover, uh, who lives in New Salem, Massachusetts, he offered to uh, show me how to do plique du jour. He was one of the, the only person I ever met who even knew how to do it. Oh my gosh, it was a crash course. It was just a, a, this week-long, all-day, every-day intensive, and I, you just have to be so focused and so just present. So uh, actually I learned, so I learned the basics from him and then actually came back to New Mexico and had to figure out a whole bunch of other stuff on my own. Anymore, it's just very few people even know what enameling is, much less all these techniques like plique du jour or champlevé or even cloisonné. It's just, uh, it's just having to educate people every time I set up a show, having to educate, educate, educate. And, oh boy. <laughs> Fortunately, the plique du jour has a following. I've, I've sold that. Uh, whew, thankfully, uh, people really understand it and the really, really serious jewelry collectors absolutely love it. I got a hold of a whole bunch of vintage enamels from various places. Let's see, the blues and the greens, especially in transparents, are extremely stable. They're really easy to use. Uh, if you overfire them, they're okay. That's why a lot of the arts and crafts jewelry from that period, you see a lot of greens and blues. It was a lot easier. But when you see, whenever you see transparent reds or oranges or yellows or pinks, like on a lot of that Fabergé, that was that's really an expert thing. You really have to be so careful with temperature because uh, the pinks especially want to turn brown. And so do the reds if you fire them too long or too many times. I've actually, you get one or two firings with the transparent reds. You know, to keep, uh, keep my education going and to keep keep teaching myself, experimenting here in the workshop and also keep my skills fresh and that kind of thing really, you know, people don't, I don't think most people get how big of a commitment it is and how it's such a tremendous leap of faith. I probably could have gone to school and been a doctor or a lawyer or something, but no, I became a jeweler.